Today I want to talk about how to use polls to create interactive presentation experiences. Now one quick housekeeping item, my eye is a little bit puffy today. I don't know why, I think it's allergies. I wasn't in any fights recently that I can remember at least. <laughs> so um, I'm going to work through it. Hopefully by the next video my eye will be back to normal. But getting back to the polls. The very first thing you want to do is strategize where are these polls going to go in your presentation. I'll bring up this PowerPoint here. A lot of times people just add polls after the fact, sort of as an afterthought. I like to be very strategic about where I'm going to use them and really build them into the overall meeting flow. So if I check out this presentation here from my Virtual Revolution workshop, basically you'll see that I have a few polling slides, such as slide 25 here, that I had strategized from the very beginning of this presentation. So this one is an, what I call an info gathering poll. Basically this is just asking the audience where they're coming from, it gives me a little bit more insight as the presenter, and helps them know kind of what their fellow attendees are thinking as well. So I've got this poll here at slide 25. I have another one at 30. Those are both info gathering polls. Now the other type of poll I like to use is called a content affecting poll. And what that means is the definition. Basically, this is going to change the way my presentation unfolds. So let me show you what this one looks like. So this is at the conclusion of my intro. And basically what I do is I give the audience a quick heads up. Your vote is going to affect how this presentation unfolds today. And I go quickly through, in this case, section one is planned presence. Section two is dynamic content. Section three is interactive broadcasts. So I give them a quick preview of each of those three sections, and this is where I launch the poll. And once they weigh in and vote which one they're most interested in, I can actually select any one of these sections and go into it. And that's how we're talking about affecting the actual content itself, right? They are changing the order of the way I give this presentation and conduct this meeting. Uh, I've even built a little menu here so I could always jump back to that page. Uh, and next time, if they vote for interactive broadcast first, I can jump into that section. So this is such a really uh, exciting way to leverage polls because it makes the audience feel like they are changing the outcome, which they very much are. So I want to show you how I kind of build these slides or strategize these slides. I think one of the really important things for me is just to make sure that they have a little bit of a unique look to them. So for these uh, info gathering ones, you'll see uh, 25 and 30, they look a little bit different from the other slides in my presentation. They have a very uh, unique look and feel. That way when I'm presenting, I'm reminding myself that, hey, this is a poll. Uh, if I've got a co-host who's helping me launch the polls, it'll alert him or her that I've got a poll coming up. So it's nice to just have that consistent look and feel. Now when it comes to those content gathering, so, uh, sorry, content affecting slides, that's where it gets really interesting because you saw how I use those links to actually navigate. So let me show you how I do that. So it's actually easier than you think. Uh, I set up a little sample slide here. These are my three sections, mind-blowing section, game-changing section, and the also awesome section. And so those three are just circles right now in PowerPoint. You see here, circles with text in the middle. And so what you want to first do is uh, for creating these links is just mind uh, note where these are going to link to, what, what number slide in your presentation. So for example, if I go to the slide sort of view here, I want that first mind-blowing section to correspond to slide 41. I'll try to remember these here. Game-changing, I want to correspond to 62. And that last one, also awesome, I want to correspond all the way down here um, to 143. All right, let's see if I can remember that. <laughs> so if I bring that slide back up, basically I right-click on this one and I choose Link. Now most people think of link only to go to external websites, but you can actually choose the second op option, place in this document. And this is where I can select that. And so I'm going to choose slide 41, which is the start of the plan present section, and I will click OK. And then watch what happens. Now if I go to present mode and I mouse over, mind blowing, that little white hand appears. That means that the link is there and it's available. And if I click on it, you'll see that I've jumped into that plan present section. So that's how you build those links. It's not that difficult. Uh, game changing, right click, link, place in this document. I think this one was 62. Yep, got it. And then I'll do the same thing for the also awesome section, which I believe was 143, maybe 
44 there, perfect. All right, so I've got my link set up there, and um, now I should be able to select any one of these. A little white hand appears to symbolize that these are all links, and I can choose Game Changing, and it jumps me into that corresponding section. So that's how you create those links that allow you to use polls as content affecting. So next what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna put the polls in Zoom. So I'm gonna bring up a web browser. You have to add these polls in Zoom through the web interface. So in that case, you do need to have access to your company's login information. You can't just launch a meeting in the desktop software. Um, first thing you wanna make sure of is just that you have polls enabled in your account. Sometimes they're disabled by default. So I believe it's an in-meeting basic here. And then if I just scroll down, there it is, meeting polls, right here. So just make sure this box is checked. If it's not checked, then you won't be able to add the polls. Uh, next, I am going to go uh, to my meetings and I'm gonna find the meeting that I want to add the polls to. In this case, I've created this one here and I'm just gonna click on it. Uh, it's very important you don't click start or edit. That changes you. That takes you to a different part of the settings. I'm just going to click on it just with my left uh, click on my mouse here and then I'm going to scroll to the bottom and this is where you see polls and this is where you can add polls. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I kind of cheated and I just put my text here in my uh, Word document. These are the polls for that for that virtual revolution workshop. So for the first one I'm just going to put that here, we'll get rid of that one, that's redundant and then I've got most of the time, half the time, not often. So I'll just type that. Most of the time, not the time, not often. Now this is where you want to make sure and just, uh, and you can add a title if you want, I'll just put number one. This is where you want to click save unless you want it to be a thread of polls. Um, so, but I want these to each be individual. I want to launch them separately from one, from one another. So I'm just going to choose that and have poll one with just one question in it. Next I'm going to choose add another one and I'm going to follow that same process for this second one here. How has the quality of your meetings changed since shifting to remote work? Worse about the same better. All right. Whoops. Better. Great. Again, save it here and I will add each one just like that. You want them to all appear as individual polls, not as one thread. Otherwise, it'll ask them all of the polls at one time, which is uh, not what I want to do in this case. All right, so now I've got those polls set up. If I go back to my meetings, I should be able to actually launch this and use these two in, in harmony now, the, the interactive presentation slides paired with the polls. So I'm gonna click Start. That'll bring my Zoom desktop software up. And I'll you know, do my normal join with computer audio. And next, what I'm going to do is find those polls. And so you'll see here, uh, I'll call it out on screen, there should be an icon that says polls like that. Uh, if, you're, if your window's a little smaller, you just have to click the more and you'll see polls there too. So you want to go ahead and click on that and make sure that your polls uh, look how you remember them. So poll number one, that looks good. Poll number two, great. Poll number three, great. Poll number four, great. So those all came through uh, just like I wanted them to. What I like to do when I'm presenting is I will, uh, just as a reminder, this wasn't popped out initially. I had to click on this polls and then it jumped out. I like to pop out that window and just move it to my second monitor. So if you do have a second monitor, that's great because you can do that while you're still screen sharing with your normal presentation. Uh, so make sure that the polls are looking good. And then, and by the way, you can do this in practice before your meeting actually starts. You can launch your meeting, double check that the polls loaded properly. So I'm gonna drag that off screen again. This is where I would then go to my screen share and start showing off my PowerPoint presentation. And again, this is where I can use the polls to create those interactive experiences. So I'll go back to present mode here and start giving my presentation. Let me just jump back to the, uh, to the intro here. So I start giving my presentation, I start going through the content, eventually I make my way to the, 
with slide 25, which is my first prompt for the poll. I bring this back up and I go back to the first poll and I just click launch and it's that easy. And so at this point, it's going to push this pop-up window to all of the attendees in the meeting and they'll start weighing in. Of course, no one's logged in on this one here. But then I'm gonna start seeing the responses come in as the administrator too. It's really, really fun. And so once I'm done, I click end polling and I can share the results so that the audience can see how everyone voted. Um, and maybe I can show you a little quick demo of that from a previous event that I've run. Uh, and the next time you're ready to go with the next poll, you literally just click over here and, and launch it again. So uh, once I make my way to that your vote count section uh, back here, then I would just bring this back on screen and click launch polling and everyone's gonna vote and again, I just love to allow the audience to participate in these the way that this experience does and the poll share the results and then uh, drag that off screen and then now everyone's seen that okay uh, let's just say interactive broadcast got the most votes well everyone knows that because they just saw the poll results and from there I can just click and start to go through that section so I just love uh, being able to provide this experience for my attendees, it creates a two-way dynamic, creates an interactive experience. And what's really neat, both as a presenter and for the audience, is I get, if I give this presentation multiple times, every one of them is actually different because I never know how my audiences are going to vote. And uh, one day I might present a few sections, another day I might present two different sections. So it's, again, it just keeps it really exciting and it really enhances the experience and it prioritizes whoever shows up and uh, allows them to really take advantage of being present and being live at these events. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Um, happy virtual presenting. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and please uh, like and subscribe this video.